What happens if you don't change the batteries on that? Thing? Well, it starts to beep. It's uh, when the power runs out, you get to the point where you have to change the batteries. And this is what the batteries look like. And they're good for about 10 hours. Yeah. But it starts <laughs> to beep when, uh, you know, and the, when I do this, of course, whoever. Yeah, I, I, I think you should put it back in. Yeah, yeah. We don't, we don't want you. Uh, uh, yeah, that would not be a good thing. That was Dick Cheney two years ago with our John Carl, showing off that pump that kept him alive until he got a new heart in 2012. And he's written all about this remarkable experience in a new book called Heart, written with his cardiologist, Dr. Jonathan Reiner. We're back now with the former vice president. You were having a little fun there with John Carl. A bit. <laughs> but, you know, one of the most moving parts of the book is when you write about those days before you got the pump and... Your days were literally numbered, You're counting the days, maybe even counting the hours, mm -hmm. of, until your heart would give out, and you write that you were at peace with that. Mm -hmm. Yet, now, you're back to, you know, something more like everyone else has all the time, since this transplant, an open-ended life. And I just wonder if you can describe what that feels like to, do, to go from having your days literally numbered to being open-ended again. Yeah. It's, um, as my doctor said, uh, a transplant is a spiritual experience, not just for the patient, but also for the, the crew, the surgical team. It's, I wake up every morning uh, literally with a smile on my face, grateful for another day I never thought I'd see. And, uh, and the other thing that comes through loud and clear after you've been through something like that is you don't sweat the small stuff and everything else is small it stuff. It really does work. It really does work. And what did this all teach you? You, you talk about the 35 years of medical innovation. What did it all teach you about the American healthcare system? Well, it, the system we have is, a, is the best in the world by far. A lot of debate about it and so forth. But the fact is, from the time I had my first heart attack in 1978, most of the things that saved my life hadn't even been invented yet. And over the last 40 years, we've in, uh, reduced the incidence of death from heart disease by 50 or 60 percent because of innovation in medicines and in, in procedures and in, in devices. And what I worry about very much is that the current debate over Obamacare, that Obamacare itself may damage that, that innovation machine that, that we've created out there. There's hope. The message in the book is about hope. It's not just about me. We use my case to tell a story of those developments. But there are 80 million Americans out there that have some form of heart disease. And uh, what they learn from the book is that, that there are treatments for a great deal of that. And in my case, you could go all the way through it. And if you're lucky enough to get a transplant and to survive that long, all of that disease goes away and you get a fresh start. We got a lot of questions about that as well. Some saying, suggesting, you know, well, yeah, it worked for you because you were able to pay for it. And the viewers also did want to know about the transplant. One, for example, Patty Pace uh, Blabon said, it's my understanding that heart transplants are rarely done on patients 70 years of age or older. Can you explain how it came to be that you were one of the lucky? Well, age isn't the only criteria. The fact is the older patient has a less likely uh, possibility for rejection. Your immune system isn't as powerful when you get older. It really depends upon the overall state of your health. If you've got some other serious health problem, you're not going to be a candidate for a transplant. But I had to meet all the same standards as everybody else did. Um, I, made, I made a a point of making that to my team, but there isn't any way you could game the system anyway. It's really set up with great integrity. It's virtually foolproof, and um, I didn't jump the line or get any special treatment. In fact, the average wait is about 10 months. I waited 20 months for my heart. You dedicate the book to your donor. Do you think you'll ever be in contact with the donor's family? Uh, there's a procedure by which you can go through a third party, in effect, and, and if both parties, both the donor's family and the recipient, want to have contact, uh, it's possible to set it up. They don't really encourage it, at least early on. Uh, when I came out from under the anesthetic, uh, I was pumped, excited, you know, I've got this gift of life. From the standpoint of the, of the donor's family, they were just Very a terrible tragedy. And, uh, but part of the thing to convey here, in my mind, is our medical system that encourages innovation uh, is, is miraculous. Uh, it's because of entrepreneurship and innovation and, and a lot of people doing a lot of hard work. Um, but it's hope not only for people who've got heart disease, but all those other diseases out there that we're working on in terms of cancer and in terms of type 1 diabetes and, and, and that innovation machine that is, in fact, uh, our modern health care system really is, is a national treasure and needs to be protected. And your recovery seems to be miraculous as well, Mr. Vice President. Thanks very much. Thanks, George.